Hello friends, this video on tissues part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the plant tissues and animal tissues separately. So first we will talk about plant tissues. Right? Now in plant tissues also, you have many different types of plant tissues. So let us look at the broad classification of plant tissues. Now broadly plant tissues are classified into two types. That is meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. Now the names might be quite fancy for you. You might be wondering what is this meristematic tissue. Well, as I mentioned before also that in biology, you will always have names which are tricky and topsy-turvy. But again, when you actually understand them, you also get to know how did it get this name, right? So we are now going to talk about meristematic tissue in this detail. So let us see what is a meristematic tissue. So let us see what are meristematic tissues. Now, let me give you a hint about the name of the meristematic tissue and I mean, why did, what is the meaning of this term meristematic? And then let me see if you can guess something that what is it going to be. Now, this meristematic tissue is derived from a Greek word merist, which actually means divided. So now can you guess what are these tissues going to be? I think you can guess something. Something which can divide right so simple to remember meristematic tissue merist means divided so something which can divide should be meristematic tissue that is your guess right so let us see so the group of cells that have ability to divide are meristematic tissues so the group of cells that have ability to divide they are meristematic tissues. Now, as I mentioned in my previous slide, that in case of a plant, the growth is limited to specific regions and those regions are known as the dividing regions. So, what kind of cells should be present in those regions? The cells which can divide, right? So, those cells are known as, so the, those cells group up together to form meristematic tissues. So, these tissues so now if you look at the next point, they are present only in certain regions. So plant growth is restricted to those regions. So these regions are known as meristems. So that means meristems are those regions of the plant where the growth is more because meristems are the regions where meristematic tissues are present. So it is very obvious, right, that in a plant, Wherever you have such tissues we ha which have the capability to divide, only their growth will take place. So these kind of tissues are only present in certain regions and those regions are known as meristems. Now these meristematic tissues results in primary and secondary growth in plants. So now you must be wondering what is this primary and secondary growth. Okay. Let me try to explain it in little more detail. So it is said that meristematic tissues are those tissues which are forever young. That means they can divide throughout their life. So they will never lose the capability to divide. Now what happens when they divide? Now when these meristematic tissues actually divide, what will happen? So these cells will divide. So new cells will be formed. Right? Now, when new cells will be formed, what will happen to those new cells? Now, some of the new cells will remain in the meristem. That means it will remain in that area where meristematic tissues actually lie. But some new cells will be pushed away from this region of division. So, let us try to understand it like this. Let us suppose this is the meristem. This box is the meristem. I'm just taking an example. I'm just trying to explain you this scenario. Let us suppose this is the meristem. So what is the meristem? Meristem is the house of meristematic tissues. That means the dividing tissues. So all dividing tissues lie inside this box. So this box is your meristem. Correct? So now let us suppose inside this meristem, you have many meristematic cells. 
So these are the cells which are actually forming the meristematic tissues. Now these cells have the capability to divide. Now let us suppose that this cell divided and it formed many new cells. So these are the new cells which are formed. Right? Now what will happen to these new cells? Now some of the new cells will remain inside the meristem. But some of these cells will be pushed out of the meristem. So they will be pushed away from the meristem. So now what happened? So some of the new cells which remained inside the meristem. So they are again going to be meristematic in nature because they are in the region of active division. So that means the cells which remain inside the meristem, they are again capable of dividing. But the cells which went away from the meristem, they are not capable of dividing anymore because they are no more in that region because meristem is the region where the active growth actually takes place. So these cells which are pushed away from the meristem, so these cells are known as derivatives and the new cells which were formed but which remained inside the meristem, they are known as initials, right? So now again what will happen? So new cells will keep on adding by repeated cell division of initial cells because these initial cells are staying inside meristem. So again cell division will take place. So more and more cells will keep on forming. And now as more and more cells form, growth will be seen. For example, let us suppose if this is the shoot of a plant. I am just taking these examples just to make you understand what actually happens, right? Now, the, this is the meristem. I am just showing you the meristem part where actively growing cells are present or the cells which can divide are present. Now, as they keep dividing, some cells are remaining inside, they are initials and those who are thrown away, they are derivatives. So, right now I am not bothered about derivatives. Now let us suppose these cells will keep on dividing. Now as they keep on dividing, more and more cells will be formed. So now when more and more cells form, what is happening? The size is increasing. Again more and more cells will be formed. So the size will increase further and these process keeps continuing and it keeps continuing because as I mentioned before, the meris meristematic tissues, these tissues remain young forever. That means they will never lose their capability to divide. They will have the ability to divide forever. Right? So now you understood what are meristematic tissues, the tissues which have the capability to divide. So because of these tissues, growth is seen in plants. Now the growth is limited to certain regions because these tissues are present in certain regions and those regions are known as meristems. Now what happens inside meristem? When the cells divide, new cells are formed. Now some new cells remain inside the meristem. They are known as initials. Whereas some other new cells are thrown away from the region of division or they are thrown away from the meristem. They are known as derivatives. Right? Now these initials will again divide further and give rise to new cells and this process will continue. Correct? I hope there is no doubt here. You should be able to understand what are these tissues. Correct? Okay. Now let us look at what is this primary and secondary growth which we are talking about. Now in plants, we talk about two types of growth. One is primary growth, which talks about the increase in length of the plant. Let us suppose you have a pot in which you have planted. This is a pot. You have planted this plant, right? So let us suppose right now it has, this is how the plant looks like. Now, in due course of time, what happens? Now, this is these are the roots of the plants. Now, in due course of time, you will see that the length of the shoot will increase. The roots have also gone deeper inside. So, what is happening actually? The length of the plant is increasing. So, this growth is known as primary growth. So, when I talk of primary growth, I am basically talking about the increase in length of the plant or the increase in height of the plant. 
Now, increase in height or increase in length implies the increase in the height of the shoot, the increase in the height of the root. So that is known as primary growth. When I talk of secondary growth, I am talking about the thickness of the plant. You would have also seen that initially maybe it was thin, but later this becomes thick. Again, when this plant becomes a tree, somewhat like this, then it becomes even thicker. So if you see, the thickness also increases, right? So this is known as, this growth is known as secondary growth. So the primary growth is always lengthwise and the secondary growth implies widthwise. Right, widthwise means the thickness of the root. Correct? So that means these meristematic tissues, it results in the increase in length of the plant and it also causes a secondary growth. That means it also increases this width of the plants. That's what I told, right? The entire growth of the plant is classified into two types, primary growth and secondary growth. This primary and secondary growth is caused by the meristematic tissues. Now, even inside this meristematic tissues also, you will have many different types of tissues and we will talk about them later. So now here another point which I would like to mention is, so till now I spoke about the initials. So these initials will remain inside the meristems and they will have the capacity to divide. Now what will happen to the derivatives which are thrown away from the meristem? So the derivatives which are thrown away from the meristem in due course of time their character as they mature their characteristics will change and they become permanent tissue. So in the previous slide I told you there are two types of plant tissues meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. So meristematic tissues are those tissues which have the ability to divide. Permanent tissues are going to be those tissues which do not have the ability to divide. So these derivatives as they mature, they gradually become permanent tissue. That means these derivatives will not have the capacity to divide. Clear? So I hope you have understood this. Right? So if you have not understood it, please repeat this slide once again. Now let us look at the characteristics of a meristematic tissue. So what are the specific characteristics which all meristematic tissues generally show? So the meristematic tissues are generally small cells. I mean these tissues are made up of cells, right? So the cells are generally small cells. They have dense cytoplasm. So I don't think I need to explain you what is a cytoplasm now because we have, I have explained all these things in our previous lesson, right? They have thin cell walls. So what was cytoplasm? Cytoplasm was the fluid which was present inside a cell. What was cell wall? It was the wall outside the cell which acts as a protective covering, which acts as an additional protective covering for a plant cell. It is not present in animal cells. Right now, just think of yourself. I mean, instead of just memorizing the characteristics of permanent tissues, just try to understand why do permanent tissues have these kind of characteristics? Why do you think that permanent tissues are made up of small cells? Why do they have dense cytoplasm? Why do they have thin cell walls? Now, what is the main characteristic? What is the main purpose of a peristematic tissue? They are dividing tissues. That means they always want to divide. Now, if they always want to divide, is it better if they have a thick cell wall or if they have a thin cell wall? Now, if they have, let us suppose if this is a plant cell and if this is the cell wall. So if they have a very thick cell wall, it will be difficult to break that cell wall and divide, right? But if they have thin cell wall, it is very easy to break it and divide. Similarly, if the cells are very big, again, it is difficult for that big cell, which is more stable, to divide easily. But if they are all small cells, they can easily divide. Similarly, the dense cytoplasm. Now, if the cytoplasm is very fluidy or very watery, what will happen when the cell will actually start dividing, that fluid-like structure will not be stable. But if it is quite dense, so even if it is dividing, the cytoplasm can arrange itself in the new cells. 
right so the dense cytoplasm small size of cell and thin cell wall they all actually help the cell to divide and that is why meristematic tissues have these kind of characteristics they have large nuclei why large nuclei that's because nucleus is the one which plays the most important role in cell division right we talked in our previous lesson while we were talking about cells we talked about the chromatin the chromatin threads the thread like structure and all the chromosomes so they are all present inside the nucleus so that means nucleus is the one who plays the leading role as far as cell division is concerned and here in case of a meristematic tissue cell division is the most important thing and that is why they have large nuclei they do not have vacuoles now why do you think they don't have vacuoles However, we know that in plant cells, vacuoles play an important role. So, vacuoles are generally large in size. But why these meristematic tissue cells do not have vacuoles? That's because, you know, just remember, what was the purpose of a vacuole? One purpose was storage of food, right? What was the other purpose? It gives rigidity to the cell. So, more vacuoles you have, the more rigid the cell is. But in this case, we don't want the cell to be rigid. It should be less rigid so that it can easily divide. So the more rigid the cell is, the more difficult it is for it to divide. So therefore, we do not have, we do not actually need these vacuoles because we do not need the cell to be rigid. So the vacuoles are also not present. No intercellular spaces. So in case of meristematic tissue, the cells are very closely packed together right and there are no noticeable intercellular spaces so these are some of the characteristics of meristematic tissues and i hope that you will not only memorize the characteristics so if you have understood the purpose of a meristematic tissues you can write these characteristics on your own because meristematic tissues have to divide so what are the things that will help it to divide thin cell wall the first thing that should come to your mind no vacuoles because vacuole will make it rigid it wants to divide who is the who plays the leading role in cell division nucleus so the nucleus should be large now it wants to divide so it is better if they are smaller in size so small cyto small cells with dense cytoplasm so that the cytoplasm doesn't scatter around here and there if it is too much watery right so this is how you can actually remember the characteristics of a meristematic tissues rather than just memorizing it thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again